if you're stood at sea level and you're in a rocket ship and you go up five and a half kilometers straight up that's where I am which is mind-boggling to be honest oxygen's at about 48 percent something like that don't hold me to that and Mount Everest is right in front of me Do it. Go ahead. I really miss my dog. I, 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 really, I really. You could do it. Go on. Yeah. I really miss my wife. You did. That was almost believable. Julia, what's her name? Mum. Yeah. 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 No, mum. You're missing mum. <laughs> okay, let's let's run it again. Take really take two. Morning, namaste. Morning. Today is our acclimatization day at Dingboche, which is a town just there. Lots of yaks. Very desolate place. But very important. It's a very important route centre. Now today will be interesting because we met up with the group. When we in Kathmandu we were split into two groups. One went ahead while our group did a day of sightseeing. The other group went to uh, start the trail. So they're a day ahead of us. And we met up with them at Nam Che on our acclimatization day and Ding Bo Che for our acclimatization day. And uh, so they had theirs yesterday and basically we're climbing a mountain, which I think is that one there, the brown one. And uh, they had a tough time. They said it was pretty tough going. The oxygen is very thin now. <clears throat> We're at 4,300 meters. We're going up to about 4,800. And uh, a couple of them couldn't make it. The interesting thing is, most of that group is on Diamox now. And to my knowledge, none of our group is. So <clears throat> that clearly means that we are by far the better group, much fitter, and not a bunch of drug addicts. Um, of course, there's no competition up here. You're at competition with the mountain, but we're still the better group. 
I feel really, really good. Most people have had headaches. I've been okay. Apart from Namche when I was quite poorly. I'm bloody glad I did the training though. There's no way I could have done this the way I was six months ago. It was minus, we reckon it was about minus 15 last night. Anything pokes out the sleeping pan, it, it freezes solid. So you don't want to stick your head out. And you don't want to stick your hands out for too long. Your water bottles freeze solid in a matter of minutes. So I had to sleep with my batteries, keep them charged up. Nice view though. What do you reckon? Extremely hard climbing, <laughs> trekking, and ridiculous open wild landscapes which look like another planet. It's scenery on a cosmic scale. Seeing mountains which dwarf anything anywhere in the world. <coughs> Excuse me, choking up a bit. Breathtaking, quite emotional, or inspiring. I can go through a whole bloody dictionary if you want. It's just Nepal. <laughs> Take that. This GoPro ain't gonna pick it up. I can zoom in on Got it. Him, but I can't get anywhere near closer. Oh, how majestic. Oh, look oh, at come that. On, baby. Come, come on, sweep around this way. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. And he is, and he is, and he is. Come on. Look at that. Love to know what sort it is. Beautiful. 
probably yaks just chilling, chewing the curd. This entire valley, not more than a few weeks ago, was just green and lush with vegetation. All the mountain sides were covered in flowers. It's hard to believe because it now looks like the moon. But that's how the seasons change things. Apparently, a lot of the residents here don't live here, they live other valleys. They come here for the tourists and the lodges and out of the season they just go away. This must be a godforsaken place in the winter. Global warming has melted a lot of the glaciers and they're forming huge lakes behind loose moraines which, you know, a small earthquake can dislodge them and suddenly you've got massive lake cascading down the valley you can imagine a tsunami coming down there can't you and the damage it would do and it's a very real problem now in Nepal just struck me I haven't heard a car <laughs> I haven't heard a car for days and that's a very odd sensation <clears throat> How many times in your life, how many days in your life can you honestly say you haven't heard a car? Morning. Big morning this morning. We've got a five or six hour climb to La Bouche. And it's extremely early in the morning. Unbelievably cold. Everybody's water's freezing in the tent, and uh, we've all sort of just had breakfast, so it's time to head out. I won't be filming much today. We don't even get lunch or stop for anything to eat. Uh, the reason being is that come the afternoon, it gets incredibly windy up there, very, very cold. It's hard to walk, so um, we're setting out at seven o'clock uh, with the intention of beating the weather. So at least it's nice and clear. made out of things. <laughs> in that lake there, which is, which is one of the glacial lakes. Still going? Yeah, 
na cidade. That better be the top, that's all I can say. realize where we are okay after that grueling climb a climb up we have just arrived at possibly one of the most haunting places in Nepal surrounded by shrines to all the people that died on Everest Here's one I think everybody knows. <clears throat> There's so many. What I thought was one area is not, it just goes on and on. And all of these here are shrines, as far as the eye can see. People have died on Everest. That's the reality of this place. You're like a challenge, and mine's quite a simple one going to Everest Base Camp. And yeah, 18 months ago, 17 people died at Everest Base Camp. They hadn't even climbed the mountain. doesn't forgive this place. It doesn't forgive at all. Just people doing what we're doing now. We're seeing helicopter after helicopter. People being emergency evacuated because of hate or haste, pulmonary edema or cerebral edema. Both of which can kill you. But now we're into a zone where even the rivers don't flow. These guys all along here, these are the Chola. Oh, you can hear me with the wind. These are all from the Chola Pass, and they're crossing the river down there where it's frozen. <coughs> and heading on up the valley which is where we're going Smile!
wiped out a bouche and absolutely wiped out something that ache. So I'm going to do buckle roll for the rest of the day. Had a little bit of downtime, so just taking a wander out from Le Boucher. Um, there's helicopter powder pad that I'm stood on actually, didn't realise. There's another one just up there, and they're in use quite a bit. People have been helicoptered out twice in the last half hour. Daunting. <laughs> with lovey. I win winning with lovey. <laughs>